Dear students, let's start with the topic of alternating current. We already discussed about direct current and the circuits related to direct current in detail in the topic of current electricity. Now we'll study about how alternating current affects the different kind of circuit and the circuit parameters. The very first thing is what is an alternating current we can simply define as it is a current which periodically changes direction is called an alternating current or it is abbreviated as AC. A simple time function of current we can define like uh, say a current flows at a constant value I naught up to a time and then it reverses to a value minus I naught and it carries over for the same time. Say this time is T by 2, this time is T and then again for a time T by 2 that is up to 3 T by 2 it is constant to I naught and then it is again constant at minus I naught up to time 2 T and so on. So this can be considered as a, an alternating current because in this situation we can see for one cycle that is from 0 to T current changes its direction and then from again T to 2T the current changes direction after half cycle. This is specific type of a current waveform as the waveform is becoming like a square or a rectangle this is called square wave alternating current. Similarly, another kind of alternating current we can define as if current linearly increases with time up to a time say T by 2 and then it decreases up to a time T and then up to 3T by 2 and then up to time T it increases and the cycle this up to 2T and then the cycle is repeated like this. Here we can see this again an alternating current with a cycle period 2t. In this situation half cycle lasts for a time t and here t by 2 is the quarter cycle of this alternating current. As uh, the current oscillates between I naught and minus I naught. Here we can define due to the shape of waveform this is termed as triangular wave AC. Similarly, we can also have a sinusoidal function for variation of current. It could be like this. If say it is represented by a sinusoidal function, then we can see in case of a sine curve, if a current is oscillating between I naught and minus I naught, here the function I can be written as I naught sine of omega t. And uh, this T by 2, this T and then this 3T by 2 and so on. The cycle period is T as uh, the current varies with the sinusoidal function of time. This is termed as sinusoidal AC. There can be many different types of alternating currents we can define. These are some standard waveforms which I have taken for example. And even it is not necessary that uh, the current in positive half cycle and negative cycle should be equal. These are all symmetric waveform even if the currents are non-symmetric, but the current is changing its direction after a particular cycle or in a cycle it changes direction. This can be considered as AC, but that will be non-symmetric AC. Let us now study about sinusoidal AC MF and its generation. In the previous topic of electromagnetic induction, we have studied that uh, when a coil is rotated at a uniform angular speed in magnetic field, EMF induced in the coil is given as you can recall the flux passing through the coil. Here you can see a realistic situation that in magnetic field a coil is placed and the terminals of coil are A and B and say coil is having n turns, the total flux linked with it uh, at any time if it starts rotating can be given as 
एन बी ए कॉस ऑफ ओमेगा टी एंड ई एम एफ इंड्यूज एन एट वी कैन राइट एस डी फाइव आई डी टी विच इज एन बी ए ओमेगा साइन ओमेगा टी विच कैन बी रिटर्न एज ई नॉट साइन ओमेगा टी एंड दिस इज दी ऑल्टरनेटिंग ई एम एफ इंड्यूज इन द कॉल विच इज असाइनोसाइडल ई एम एफ इन द सिचुएशन and the sinusoidal emf or which is termed as ac emf for an ac source it is represented in electrical circuit by this symbol which i am drawing and this is a symbol of an alternating current source and if we talk just about an ac generator or which is also termed as alternator this constructed by the same mechanism here you can see there are two pole pieces in between a coil is placed here you can see if the coil is rotated at an angular speed omega through the slip rings connected with the two terminals of the coil the brushes will have a constant touch with the slip rings and the brushes will have an alternating emf which are the output terminals for the generator This is the way how alternating EMF or a sinusoidal EMF is produced in an alternator or an AC generator. Let us study about the average value of an alternating current. For any circuit, we know well that uh, average current in a circuit we can write as uh, i average is equals to delta q by delta t if uh, in a duration delta t a total charge delta q passes through it if uh, there is a time varying current say we are given a function of current as a function of time say there is a function for current as a function of time and say we wish to calculate the average value of current between time t1 to t2 then uh, the area under the curve from t1 to t2 will give us the total amount of charge flow delta q which is written as integration of i dt from t1 to t2 and uh, the average current for a time function or for a time varying current is this we can now write as i average here we are calculating the average from time t1 to t2 this we can write as integration from t1 to t2 i dt divided by t2 minus t1 this delta q by delta t so this is the way how we define the average value for any current we can write as 1 by delta t integration from t1 to t2 i dt this is the way by which we can calculate the average current for uh, any circuit but uh, you must also understand that if in a circuit a direct current is flowing and we know the value of i dc never changes with time if it is a pure direct current so here in the situation for any circuit between any duration you can see the average value of current is always equal to the value of dc current because it never changes with time so for any direct current circuit total amount of charge flow we can directly calculate as charge flow due to a dc is this delta q we can always write as i dc multiplied by the duration delta t whereas in case of alternating current the area we can calculate and using which we can find out the average value of the current as just now we have studied that uh, average value of an ac current can be given as 1 by delta t integration from t1 to t2 i dt now using this concept we can also define one uh, important parameter related to average value let's first write down that uh, mean or average value of ac is equal to that dc value due to which in a circuit same charge flows 
which flows due to AC in same duration. Let's first analyze this concept mathematically. If we consider a duration delta t which is from t2 minus t1 or it is from t1 to t2, we have two currents. One is I which is given as a function of time and other is a DC current. Due to both of these, we can calculate the charge flow due to I DC is, this can be written as delta Q which is equals to I DC multiplied by T2 minus T1. And if we calculate the charge flow due to I which is the time varying current, this can be written as delta Q is equals to integration of I DT from T1 to T2. You can see if both of these charges are equal, we can write I DC multiplied by T2 minus T1 as equals to integration of I DT from T1 to T2. Here you can see the value of DC current is equals to 1 by T2 minus T1 integration from T1 to T2 I DT. Here you can see this is exactly the average value. That's what I have written over here. Let's read it out once again. Mean or average value of AC this average value is equal to that DC value due to which in a circuit same charge flows which flows due to AC in same duration. So, for a fixed duration if a charge flows due to a DC current, the same charge flows due to the given AC current then the DC value can also be regarded as the average value of this AC. So, you must be very careful and this phenomenon also help you out in analyzing different numericals related to average value of an AC. Let us now study the root mean square value of an alternating current. As we already know that for a time function which is given as f of t, average value can be calculated as this f of t average is equals to 1 by T2 minus T1 integration from T1 to T2 FT DT. This is a generalized average function formula using which we can calculate average current or any average of a function which varies with time. Now, here we are required to study root mean square value of an AC. So, we can write for a given AC which is given i as a function of time, first we define mean square value is given as, if we calculate the mean square value, it is the average of i square, this is termed as ims. That is, if we square the given function and find out its average, this will be given by 1 by T2 minus T1 integration of uh, I square DT from T1 to T2. We are using the same average function, not for calculation of current, but for calculation of average of uh, square of the current. Now, this is the AC current which is given to us. So, this is the way how we can calculate the mean square value. If we wish to calculate the RMS value of AC, this root of mean of a square, this I RMS can be calculated as root of I mean square, which can be written as root of 1 by T2 minus T1 integration from T1 to T2 I AC square DT. This is the function which we can use for calculation of uh, root mean square current. Let's also continue our discussion for physical significance of this root mean square current. Let us discuss the significance of RMS current which we have calculated. We know that uh, for a time varying current, 
i say we talk about the ac current which is given as a function of time the total heat produced when it is passed through a resistance r in time t1 to t2 is this heat we can directly write integration of uh, i square r dt which is integrated from t1 to t2 here this is the time varying ac current and similarly we can say if uh, a current i dc which is a direct current pass through a resistance r then heat produced in same time is this heat uh, we can write say this h1 this h2 this can be written as i dc square r multiplied by t2 minus t1 as current does not change with time we can directly use i square r delta t now say if uh, this heat and this heat are same if h1 is equals to h2 this implies see what we are getting here this i dc square r t2 minus t1 is equals to integration from t1 to t2 i ac square r dt here r gets cancelled out and see what we are getting for the value of i dc it is under the root 1 by t2 minus t1 integration from t1 to t2 i ac square dt you can see this is the same rms value i rms which we obtain by using uh, the square root of uh, the average of uh, square of the ac current that means this rms value of current is directly giving us an effective dc current with which the same amount of thermal energy can be produced in a resistance which AC produces in the given time in the same resistance. So here we have got another definition for uh, the root mean square current as well as its uh, significance in different kind of mathematical calculations. Let's carry on with the next sheet. Now as uh, we have just calculated that RMS current is defined as the DC value which produces the same amount of heat in a resistance R. So here we can also write down that uh, RMS value of a given alternating current can be defined as that DC value which produces same heat in a resistance which the AC of which we are calculating RMS value produces in that resistance in same duration. That means if we are given with the resistance R and a time varying alternating current F of T is flowing, then for a given duration delta T we can directly write the heat produced will be equals to I RMS which is the RMS value of this AC current square R delta T. Directly we can use RMS value of AC as the effective DC value. For any AC current, RMS current is also called effective DC value of a given AC. Whenever we require to calculate the amount of heat produced or power relations are concerned. Let us now calculate the average current of a sinusoidal AC. We know that sinusoidal AC can be given as a function 
I is equals to I naught sine of omega t, where uh, I naught is the peak value of the current. And uh, if the function is plotted, it will look like this. As a sine function, it varies in this manner as it is oscillating between I naught and minus I naught. And uh, this half cycle and this one complete cycle. Here you can see if we calculate the area of the curve for the complete cycle, we can see the total charge flow in one cycle is zero. So we can directly write for one complete cycle delta Q through this alternating current is zero. This implies if we calculate the average value, this will also be zero. But we calculate the average value of current for half cycle that will certainly be non zero. And here we can calculate average value of this AC is this can be written as average value of this AC is this for half cycle we are calculating. We can calculate the value of half cycle that is I mean. Which can be written as 1 upon t by 2 integration from 0 to t by 2 i dt, which can be written as 1 by t by 2. This will be 2 by t integration 0 to t by 2 i naught sine omega t dt. If we integrate this, it will be 2 i naught by t sin omega t1 integrated it will be minus cos of omega t by omega and we apply the limits from 0 to t by 2 and as t is 2 pi by omega as omega we consider as uh, angular frequency of uh, this alternating current. So, time period we can write as 2 pi by omega. So, the limit will apply from 0 to pi by omega. We substitute the value of pi by omega this will be 2 i naught by t minus omega we can write as 2 pi by t. So, this will be t upon 2 pi and cos omega t we can write as cos pi this minus 1 minus of cos 0 is plus 1. Here this t gets cancelled out, 2 gets cancelled out. So, finally, we are getting the mean value of this Sinusoidal alternating current we can write as 2 i naught by pi. Just keep this result with you as in many cases we can directly use this result. Wherever we need to do the analysis related to charge flow within half cycle of an alternating current. So, for half cycle its mean value or average value we write as 2 i naught by pi. Let us now calculate the RMS value of a sinusoidal AC. Again, we can consider sinusoidal AC as I is equals to I naught sin omega t, where I naught is the peak value. And if we plot the function, this function as a sine curve which looks like this for half cycle that is t by 2, and then next half cycle is t, then 3t by 2, and so on. The current is oscillating between plus i naught and minus i naught. If we calculate the mean square value, you can see the mean square value, if we square it, the function will uh, be varying with the same period, but uh, half cycle, the value will rise to a peak value i naught square, and then for the next half cycle, again it will rise to the same value. Or you can say even if the direction of current is opposite, if we square it, the sine of i square will remain same. So we can write after every half cycle, the direction of mean square value is not changing. So its period changes to half also, and it is oscillating between zero to i naught square. So here it won't make any difference if we calculate the root mean square value for half cycle of the AC or for the full cycle of AC, it will remain same because in the next half cycle the function is repeating itself. So here we can write RMS value of AC. This AC we are calculating whether it is a half 
or full cycle, it will not make any difference, it will remain same. This I RMS can be given as uh, this is uh, root of I mean a square value. And this mean a square we can separately calculate as uh, the mean of a squares. It is uh, 1 upon t by 2 integration from 0 to t by 2 i square dt, which is i naught square sine square omega t dt. So here we are calculating the average of a squares, then by using this we can find out the RMS value. Here if it is further simplified, it is uh, 2 i naught square by t integration 0 to t by 2 sine square omega t, we can write as 1 minus cos 2 omega t by 2 dt. Now if we integrate the function, this mean square value, here we are getting is 2 i naught square by t and uh, this will be t by 2 minus sine of 2 omega t by 4 omega. And we substitute from 0 to t by 2 again we can write as pi by omega. Now we substitute the values over here, see what we are getting 2 i naught square and uh, here this time period can also be written as uh, 2 pi by omega. And uh, you can see a second term is becoming 0 because it is sine 2 pi or sine 0, both terms will be 0. So here we have, if we substitute the value of t as pi by omega, this will be pi by 2 omega. And here you can see this omega gets cancelled out. And finally see what we are getting here, pi also gets cancelled out, this is i naught square by 2, we are getting when 2 also gets cancelled out. So this is the mean square value, then from this relation here we can see the value of i RMS is root of i naught square by 2. So we can see for a sinusoidal AC, its RMS current can be given as i naught by root 2. Similarly, if we are given with the AC EMF, then in that case uh, RMS value of EMF can be written as E naught by root 2, where uh, E naught is the peak EMF of AC generating device or AC generating source. So this can be written as uh, root mean square value of the AC EMF. This is also going to be used in many cases, so you must be careful that uh, for a given sinusoidal AC, and uh, you should also remember even if there is some phase associated, like if it is I naught sine of omega t plus pi, then also we can say it won't affect anything on the function, so RMS value will remain same, and even for half cycle or for full cycle, the value of uh, root mean square sinusoidal AC will be same, the same is also termed as effective value of an alternating current. In this example, we are given that an electric bulb is designed to operate at 12 volt DC. If the bulb is connected to an AC source and it gives same brightness, then it is asking what would be the peak voltage of AC. Now in this situation, we can directly state as brightness is same, this implies the effective voltage which is also the RMS voltage of AC must be 12 volt. Because in case of DC if the voltage is 12 volt, then for AC, if it is giving same brightness, that means it is producing same thermal power in the resistance of bulb, we can directly write its effective or RMS value must be 12 volt. And we know that E RMS is equals to E naught by root 2, where E naught is the peak value of the EMF or the voltage of AC source. So here peak value can be given as E naught is equals to root 2 times E RMS, which can be written as 12 root 2 volt. That will be the answer to this problem.
in this example we are given that the direct current of 2 ampere and an ac of peak value 2 ampere flows through resistances 2 ohm and 1 ohm respectively and we are going to find the ratio of heat produced in the two resistances in the same interval now in this situation if we consider the two resistances one is of 2 ohm and other is of 1 ohm 2 ohm carries a 2 ampere dc current and 1 ohm carries a peak value of current i not is equals to 2 ampere in this situation we know the rms value of current is i not by root 2 this is i not so this will be 2 by root 2 ampere which is root 2 ampere current is flowing as the effective value so we can directly calculate the ratio of heat produced in the same interval so we can write in time t heat produced in this resistance is h1 which can be written as i square r t here we can write it 2 square multiplied by 2 into t which is 80 and here we calculate the heat produced this can be written as i rms square r t then i rms is root 2 so this can be written as root 2 whole square multiplied by resistance is 1 ohm is time and the time t, so this will be 2t. If we calculate the ratio h1 by h2, which we are required to find the problem, this will be 8t by 2t, so the result will be 4, that is the answer to this problem. In this example, we are given that an AC voltage is given as E is equals to E1 sin omega t plus E2 cos omega t and we are required to find the RMS value of this voltage. Now, in this problem, we are given that uh, this AC EMF is E1 sin of omega t plus E2 cos of omega t. Here we can reduce this uh, function in a single trigonometric form by substituting here we can write E1 as E0 cos theta and we can substitute E2 as E0 sin theta. See what we'll be getting here. This EMF will become E0 sin omega t cos theta plus E0 cos omega t sin theta, which will reduce in the form E0 sin of omega t plus theta. Here the value of the EMF E0 we can calculate by squaring and adding these functions. You can see we will get E1 square plus E2 square is equals to on the right hand side it will be E0 square or E0 we can write as root of E1 square plus E2 square. So in this situation if this function is reduced in this form we can write that E0 is the peak value of this alternating EMF. So here uh, the RMS value we know it can be given as E0 by root 2 for any sinusoidal EMF. So this will be given as root of uh, E1 square plus E2 square by 2 that will be the answer to this problem. And uh, you can also solve this alternatively. We talk about alternative method to solve this problem. This can be directly calculated by the function we use for calculation of E RMS which is root of uh, 1 by time period which is 2 pi by omega integration from uh, 0 to 2 pi by omega EMF as a function of time square into dt because uh, this function is giving us mean square value of uh, the alternating EMF and this overall value will be giving us the root mean square value. This is the mean square value here we are calculating the average of a squares and then we are taking the root. So either ways you can directly calculate. So be careful about the analysis.